Okay, right. We'll get going. Thank you, everyone, for um for joining us. Um, so yeah, this is the first uh, lunch and learn for the Lanx Climate Action Network. So um, this is just something that we've come up with as an idea, just to bring um bring people together. So hopefully, uh, you'll be able to learn about what other organisations are doing. Um, you'll be able to um learn from them um find out about upcoming opportunities and um and it also gives you a chance if you want to get involved at later on to kind of showcase or spread the word about what you are doing as well so um we'll get going so we've given ourselves a fairly strict time timetable so we're going to have a couple of presentations first um which are going to be roughly 10 minutes long with a chance for questions at the end um, and then there'll be an, any other business uh, sort of section at the end where you can share any upcoming events or opportunities. Um, we'll also have a chat about what we're going to do for the next uh, Lunch and Learn events as well. Um, and again, sort of any feedback from the group or questions. Um, we've got uh, Chris here, Professor Chris Dent, who's been driving the uh, Climate Action Network forward. So if you've got any questions for him, you can ask him uh, as well. Or if you see anybody else on there that you want to just grab, then then do that as well. Take take the opportunity to do that. So without further ado, we'll just get on. We'll, uh, so our first uh, speaker is going to be Sam Marine, who's the Northern Network Project Manager for Groundwork Cheshire Lancashire and Merseyside's Northern Network of Green Community Hubs. So I'll just hand over to Sam and hopefully you should be able to uh, share your screen or presentation or whatever you're going to do. So over to you. Um. Great. Thanks, Harvey. Um. Yeah, so I've got a presentation. Um. So I will um share my screen let me just turn it into a present oh wait actually no i need to do it this way i'm used to using team not um <laughs> not zoom okay um can everyone see my screen now um and if i turn it into a into a powerpoint does that work has everyone seen the powerpoint now okay um so I'll try and be as brief as possible, keep it to about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a bit of an overview of the Northern Network project. And then my colleague Angela um, is going to talk in a bit more detail about our pilot hub in Morecambe. Um, so yes, uh, so I'm the project manager for the Northern Network. Um, and the Northern Network is about creating, about connecting green community hubs and green community spaces across the North of England together online and offline. Um, and the project started in September 2022 and unfortunately is due to finish this spring, but we're um, yeah hopefully going to be able to keep it going. Um, we held um, consultations with communities across the North about how we would develop a Northern network and what a Northern network could look like. Um, and that was around, it was November to about February uh, 22 to February 23. And then we launched our online network in May 2023. So we've not been going that long, uh, but we've managed to pack in quite a lot to the past sort of seven to eight months. Um, the pilot uh, hubs are um, started a bit earlier and I'm just going to tell you a bit more about that. Um, so our main goal with the Northern Network, and that's that was built out of our um, consultation that we did with communities and community leaders, was around working towards three main goals. So supporting communities and enhancing the work of communities, improving connections between green spaces and healthcare, which is always a hot topic. And uh, of course, uh, supporting the uh, development of by you know the environment initiatives to help the environment and sharing you know talking about that link between community work and the environment um, and key to the northern network so we are an online resource but our, our pilot hub so we alongside um alongside creating this online resource and trying to create this network we also wanted to understand the role of green community hubs through pilot working and as you can see in the bottom we've got our sponsors so it's the works funded by the national lottery community fund um so what did we do a very whistle stop tour i'll try and give you an overview um so we created an online website and at the end of the presentation, there'll be a link to our website. Um, and we based our activities that we wanted to do through the network based on the consultation that we did. Um, so key that came out of the consultation was opportunities to network. So we held events at our pilot hubs and at other hubs around the North, a big green festival. Um, we ran online networking sessions once a month. So it was, you know, sessions like this. Uh, we ran training and development sessions and uh, we created an online learning series. So webinars and videos that you can view on our YouTube channel as well. 
Um, we also uh, worked with seven green leaders um, in across the north of England. Um, and that photo right at the bottom is an example of one of the workshops that they that we held. Um, this was around uh, capacity building and leadership building and skills and again came out of a consultation which uh, people often community leaders said to us that there was sometimes a divide between uh, people that work in organizations you know such as myself at groundwork there are career development opportunities CPD opportunities and if you're volunteering or you're working for yourself um, often you're not able to access those kind of opportunities so we tried to put on a program and we did put on a program that gave those people the opportunity to access CPD. Um, we worked with groups in Cheshire and Merseyside um, and we created a report about the barriers to uh, green social prescribing um, mainly around access accessible and sustainable funding um, and we also put together, and this is just currently happening now, our Green Skills Programme, which was around providing uh, funding for groups um, to uh, to access training. So it wasn't necessary that we were able to give grants out, but we people gave us their ideas and we were able to then pay for them to go on those, those training. Um, so what have we learned? So initially this slide was uh, called, what were the challenges? But I've um, been doing a course myself around re uh, reflection. So instead of saying what the challenges were, I'll say what, what we've learned through the process. So what we learned, uh, the first thing, I don't think it should have been a surprise to us, but what we learned was that the North is very big, the geography is very big. And so when we're trying to work on a Northern scale, we have to work with our partners and people on the ground and communities to be able to do that effectively. Um, and like I say, I don't think any of that was a surprise, but it was really humbling and important to be, you know, reminded of that factor when we're trying to do, um, you know, large scale work across the north. Um, so the training session. So something that came out of um, our consultation was that people said that they wanted access to more training. So we thought, well, the easiest way to get people to access more training is to put on training sessions and they were free and they we would try to put them in different uh you know in di different places around the north and actually what we found um as i'm sure many people here know that often there is a difficulty with offering free activities sometimes if something is you know the the science or the psychology behind it is that if something is free sometimes it's harder to get people to um you know attend or they might book on but then they might not value it and that something else might come up equally going back to that point around geography um it's very big so we're trying to do something on a massive scale we didn't have a lot of time and actually we potentially spread ourselves a bit too thin so that was our tr our training program it was you know there's a lovely picture here of a group in Northwich learning about sods from my colleague Pete um but we we pivoted and we did our green skills program which actually was more successful so we were able to learn from that experience which was good um and then time so our project is 18 months and 18 months to cons consult with communities develop develop a, an idea pilot the idea continue to do engagement and then try and hit the whole of the north we were very uh yeah sometimes we, we we weren't able to do everything that we wanted but again what we learned from that is the benefit of working in partnership of going out to our key contacts um and seeing how we can work together instead of trying to do everything ourselves so three very important um and valuable lessons um and then what were the successes so um the success is definitely um, working in communities in our pilot hubs, seeing those hubs flourish and the community develop around the green spaces. Um, the, all the hubs, and Angela will tell you more about our hub in Morecambe, are places where there either is a green space, but it's been neglected or there hasn't been accessible green space. So the Northern Network was really about opening those green spaces up and that's been a really positive experience. Um, our green leadership programme, our seven leaders, um, we're all there in that picture on the right in Penrith on our last um, session. That was a really positive experience and all of the leaders, they've all got different journeys and they're all doing their own thing in their communities, but they've all really valued the opportunity. Um, and also we were able to give them some funding. Um, so they were paid for their time and they really valued that as well. Um, a knowledge exchange session. So we've got hubs across the whole of the North. We've got a Northern network, which is across the whole of the North. But this January, we were able to share learning between the different hubs and different communities. And we bust people to and from um, around the North. And that's been a really, um, really positive experience. Everyone's really valued 
um, the opportunity to go and visit another site in a completely different part of the country and learn from each other instead of always learning from us, which has been really beneficial. And also our online webinars and videos. So again, this was a bit of a pivot from hosting in-person training sessions, recognizing the geography, we'll take it online. And they've um, you know, been quite popular. We've got a, a popular Grow and Eat series online where Angela's cooking in at Grow Blackpool, talking about how they utilize the veg that they grow there. Um, so that's been a really positive experience about creating a bit of a learning platform. Um, so what next? Um, so unfortunately, our funding is due to finish in spring 2024, um, but we are currently looking for more funding and we are hopeful that we will be continuing the project. So we will be, if we are able to continue the project, we'll be work looking to work in more areas, make more part partnerships and connections. Um, but regardless, our online website will still continue. Our online membership will still be engaged Um on you know we've got our online guides and videos um and yeah we want to we want to continue in in any way we can um so that is a very whistle stop tour i try to keep it to 10 minutes i know that i can waffle on a bit um but yeah thank you very much um for for listening um that's our website there so you can go on the northern network I should have said actually at the start it's free to join anyone can join um become a member we've currently got 140 members at the last count um and yeah you could access um resources how to guides videos um you know we've got we had our online online events um so yeah any any questions happy to take them um here or there's my email address as well so thank you thanks Sam. that was brilliant um yeah really good summary of uh of your of, of the program um yeah some of the challenges i can definitely appreciate the geography trying to tie everyone together yeah a, a short time scale definitely 18 months although it sounds like a long time is is not that long um mm -hmm. And some great learning and but obviously some really good successes and things to take forward as well so um and one of the things i was really uh, interested in was the green leadership program and whether you know whether you could just tell us a tiny little bit more about that and what was involved and what the people got out of it and whether that's something that could be um you know shared maybe or or help could help the the, community, the climate action network really definitely um so yeah so the Green Leadership Program was um, it was funded partly by Natural England. It was an add on to our initial program and it came directly out of consultation uh, where we people were telling us that there was this kind of disparity between different parts of the charity sector and the environment sector, especially in regarding the roles of people volunteering their time or setting up their own CIC or community group. Um, so we had seven pilot leaders in our program. They each um, they each were given £1,250 of development funding for themselves um, and they attended five workshops across the north of England once a month. Um, each workshop was led, was themed by themes that we picked out of our consultation and it was led by a peer facilitator. So it wasn't not, not someone from groundwork, it was um, someone who also um, was a you know, ran their own business or was a volunteer, but had gone through that journey and was now a leader in that in their position. Um, and they 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 developed the workshop. So we gave them the theme and then they developed the workshops. Um, but what when we when we sort of talk about the leadership program in our evaluation, we say we not only work with seven emerging leaders, but we work with five other community leaders and they were all freelancers and um, you know, ran their own CICs. And so we were able to actually support 12 green leaders um instead of just seven which was quite nice um but all of the so we've had quite a lot of feedback now from the leaders themselves and they've all really valued as i said that time to come out of their day-to-day -day of um their sometimes they're working if they're care, got caring responsibilities mm -hmm. and carve that time for themselves then they're, they're quite a they are quite a diverse bunch in terms of their experiences and where they come from so they've valued being able to meet people that they they would not have met before, um, and I think one of the um, one of the, the the sort of most touching feedback I had was from um, one of the participants from Cumbria who um, has set up a group 
um, of support group for parents of carers and they do walks um, outside and she takes them out um, and they do instead of having support sessions indoors she does it outdoors with them and she said that she this program enabled her to gave her the confidence to travel and it gave her it enabled her children to see that she she can go away and do things and that's okay and she'll come back and before that she hadn't had that opportunity to do it and especially with the funding she wouldn't have been able to do it unless we'd given them funding to travel because she was traveling all the way from Cumbria. So I think, yeah, something definitely want to continue it. It's part of our part of our new funding bid. If anyone is interested in finding out more and wants to partner, um, then I'd be happy to, you know, have the conversation. And I think definitely in thinking what we want to do in phase two with the leadership program is make it much more regional. So we did have this northern like focus for the pilot. Um, which had its benefits, but the challenges. And actually, yeah, we'd love to do like a Lancashire and South Cumbria or Lancashire and Cumbria and Northwest um, cohort, which, you know, brings more leaders together. So, yeah, definitely happy to have conversations about that. Great. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, perhaps that's something that, that could be uh, put on the list of potential projects for the uh, for this network, uh, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any other questions for Sam before we ask Angela to do her presentation? You want to just shout out or raise a hand or... Um, there will be time again at the end if anybody wants to, um, to ask that. I'll just... Is there anything in the chat? Have a check. And no, there's nothing in there. Okay, so right, we'll move on to um, our next talk for today then. Uh, so now it's going to be Angela Nagorski, who is the project facilitator at the Green Community Hub uh, in Morecambe. So that was one of the pilot projects. Um, and Angela's going to talk about her experience in Morecambe. So over to you, Angela. Hello, um, Sam, are you okay sharing? those pictures I sent you if that's okay so I've got a few pictures to uh, show you of the park um, as well as sort of I'm going to chat so excuse me I'm going to read off some notes uh, so I've been working in Morecambe uh, as a, a hubs facilitator uh, at a park called the Clay Pits Park um, it's a green space surrounded by back-to-back -back terraced houses in the centre of Morecambe and um, it was donated by the children of, uh, to the children of Morecambe, traditionally used as a recreational area. Um, the park has a history of underfunding and antisocial behaviour, and uh, children have used it um, all the time, basically evening and uh, and in the day. Uh, the children of the area have no gardens; uh, it's all terrace, so it's uh, heavily used. Um, there's, so if you can you have a look on the next slide, if that's okay. So there's been a lot of um, problems with uh, sort of children attacking trees and taking uh, the bark off trees and um, lo local buildings uh, such as the local gym, which has been not used for about 20 years, have been a focus of antisocial behaviour. Uh, children have been breaking into it and trying to set it on fire and various other things. Uh, local police and authorities have seen this area as a low priority due to um, no, basically the, the local people uh, don't ring the police. Uh, they've sort of given up really. And uh, they did, uh, there's been a lot of low expectations on all sides uh, around this area. So I was called uh, in uh, and worked alongside a number of people to initially identify change makers and um, sort of engage through community mapping the local local councillors and strong residents who had some sort of part playing um, sort of what was going on at the time like litter picking and so forth and um, so we got support from the local residents to set up a Friends of the Park and I mentored a number of people to create a Friends, uh, a friends group and linked with um, the local realm office at the uh, Lancaster City Council. Um, so we had an AGM and uh, got support from local people 
and uh, the playgrounds department of the council and the parks department. And um, we, I supported them around the governance, you know, paperwork, risk assessments, uh, con the constitution, social media, advertising, all the things that you need when you set up a friends. And they had the AGM, you can see in the corner picture, they were like some of the local residents who first, the very first meeting. And we also invited like people like the CVS and the council again uh, to come along. And uh, so the friends set up their priorities through the subgroup uh, and created a subgroup and uh, had wider consultations with local residents around what they thought uh, you know, they needed from everyone. So if you go to the next slide, Sam. So these are some of the charities and community organisations that uh, they, they partnered with. I don't know if you can see some of them under the pictures, but uh, one of them is uh, the Clubhouse, which is a local learning disabilities organisation that's actually on the park. Um, the council, of course. Uh, food Futures, which is based in Lancaster, which is a food... Uh, I don't know if anybody knows that organisation, but they do a lot of support around composting and food growing and uh, a, a instrumental in building a community garden within the park. Um, and then the, the Bay Blueprint Recovery, which uh, have been feeding volunteers to the park to sort of encourage local people to to partake as well. Uh, the local Trimple Club, Cricket Club, have been allowing people to go along to use the loo and storing tools there. And um, it's been, you know, sort of these people are partaking in a lot of the activities within the park. And the other one is, of course, at the bottom is Morecambe FC, so there's been a lot of um, support around sport and getting the children to uh, um, engage in sport uh, after school at night. And so they've got a local, they've got a mugger that the local um, multi-sport sessions have been held at and there's, they're going to be ongoing. Um, so I don't know if you want to go to the next slide, Sam. So activities um, that incorporate uh, sort of dealing with climate change and biodiversity have been really at the forefront of what what the friends have been doing so they've been doing things like tree planting native hedgerow planting uh nato native meadow creation uh linking in with eden and the bay um blueprint to recovery uh massive litter picking because obviously uh, a lot of the children have been throwing all sorts of things into watercourses and in the trees. We've we found some lovely things over the this last year. Uh, I won't go into too much detail. And um, so they're in the process of planning and building a community garden to promote local grown food. And uh, there's been a lot of training around that. And uh, the Bay and uh, F Food Futures have been included in that to work alongside the, the friends and the subgroup. Uh, to create this uh, garden um, and there's been a lot of mentorship around this uh, and training uh, through other organisations as well as Northern Network um, but also things like we've just done um, a really knowledge, great knowledge exchange with another park from Workington so they came we went there and they came to us and uh, a lot of the subjects were around um, sort of uh, well green bathing was fabulous and uh and then on the other side it was like biodiversity and and growing and uh sort of wild flowers and all sorts of things like that and encouraging wildlife um so their priorities are now replacing broken equipment tools they've they've got all these things and funding for lighting and uh action with count the council and the police for things like um dealing with this antisocial behavior they've managed to engage with local people and there's a there's been a lot of enthusiastic response to the park whereas once there was a lot of despondency. So I think that's a really good key point uh, that one of the successes of what this project, um, if you go to the next slide, Sam, we might as well, yeah. 
So um, there's just some more pictures of activities that have happened on the park. And people were encouraged to ring the police net, um, through social media. And that's made a massive difference to the park because people are actually engaging with the park more. I think at one point, children were quite frightened of it, to be honest, at night time children go on it or um you know in the day sorry because of they were just quite frightened of what you know other thing other children and and other things that were happening on the park so funding for lighting um has been um is in the process of been happening and uh that's a partnership with the council and the police and more people are partaking in the activities now so uh there's been more sport there's been more sort of formal activities plus um sort of people are having picnics on the park mums and children are going on the park which is fantastic and they're joining in on and you can see those three children they were actually bulb planting so they were doing naturalizing bulbs all around the trees around the edges of the park which has been absolutely lovely um feedback on training has been really positive and the friends have been feeling confident to run these activities after my membership and I'm sort of pulling back now and sort of allowing them to run run everything. So this is the sustainability of having this 18 month process that we've, you know, I've got to sort of pull back off it. But what we've done is replace that with these partners. So they are going to be able to give them that extra support while, you know, we, we move off. Um, and it allows, and it's allowing local residents to feel safe in a beautiful green space again, which is, it's it's such a huge thing. And um, so this is a community led organization top and it's not top down, it's all come from the local residents. And it's, and the, so they're collaborating with every, all these partners and it's, uh, it's, it's creating a sustainable process that's going to continue after we've gone and the the changing and communication with local people has improved so much uh if you speak to local authorities they they're really happy with the process and they're really happy to support them as well and um it's been a challenge but um i think that from where we started to where we're finishing is is just huge because uh, many, many people are using this park now and they've changed how they use it and how how safe they feel. So that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. So that was, um, yeah. yeah, that was great. Um, again, some really, really uh, important aspects to that presentation and the, and the project as a whole so obviously it's a community project you're improving the environment the the meadow the tree planting all those things are going to have massive benefits but i think the wider kind of social benefits mm. getting the community involved and and i think again the legacy of it is really key so often you have funding you set something up but then when the funding runs out it's the question is what happens now type thing but obviously that's all been completely built into the project and and it does sound like it's it's going to carry on and and it's really started something new and really positive for the community so positive um comments in the in the in the chat as well so thanks for that and again i think the other thing i thought which sam mentioned as well was this idea of collaboration working in partnership you know virtually i suppose i'm sure most of the projects we'll hear about through this network our partnership projects, people working together, because no one organization, no one group of people can necessarily do everything themselves. So working with other people is so important. Um, so does anybody have any um, any questions? Um, yes, I'll, sli I'll share the slides. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> um, yeah, and the other thing I was thinking, actually, if, the, if there are any groups who want to, again, you talked about the knowledge exchange, whether there's opportunities for for that with other groups maybe coming to see this project or or vice versa you know again i think this that's what this network's all about really so I certainly encourage definitely encourage that all the people's contact details are in the information uh, are they on the website chris or are they are they sent i can't remember if you send them out hi yeah uh the invitations to the langscan lunch and learn events no, sorry, the uh, people's contact details. So if, uh, I mean, we've seen Sam's con put her contact oh. details up. Can other, yes. can members of the network access other people's um, contact details? 
Uh, yeah, well, okay. Um, we haven't got Angela's, I don't think, on the on the invite um, invitation that you sent or you you penned for us, Harvey. Uh, but we can send details out. I mean, I'm not too sure how many of the I think is about thirty people we got on this uh, this call, which is fantastic, uh, are Langscan members, Lancashire Climate Action Network members. But if you are, um, I sent out the most up-to-date January members list, which has all the email addresses of everyone there. Um, so this is also a time for me to shamelessly plug <laughs> the networking. I'll put my uh, my contact details in the... Um, I'll just unmute my camera and stop the video again. Um, I'll put my contact details in the chat. So if you do would, would like to get involved in Langscan, um, then please let me know. But Harvey, what else can we do? Can we... Uh, um, well, it's I think, I mean, yeah, people can talk and contact um, Angela through Sam, I guess, through Sam's uh, email address. I don't know if you want to just put that up quickly again, Sam, that slide. Yeah, I'll um, put my email address in the chat. Fun. And then, yeah, if you want to yeah. know anything about our project or the other, um, like, groundwork pilot hubs as well, then, uh, you know, we can put you in touch with our um, yeah. our team as well. Yeah, brilliant. Um, um, the other... We... Yeah, go Sorry, ahead. Sorry, Harvey, no, go, but, on. go ahead, Harvey. Um, well, I was just going to say, I mean, obviously, so now we've we've done the sort of formal bit. We've had the two talks. Um, the rest of it is really kind of over to the attendees, really. So if you want to, you know, we've got, again, we've got uh, uh, 27 people now who are still with us. Um, so if you want to introduce yourself, if you want to ask a question, if you, you know, it'd be great to have some feedback. This is the first one we've done. Um, so it's a completely new thing. Has it been useful? Um, what would you like to see in future? We've had uh, a couple of thoughts about what the theme of the next one might be. So uh, there's been a bit of uh, activity around wildlife. Uh, so Andy Hardman, who's the wildlife lead for the um, for the network, um, has emailed around um, thinking, well, yeah, asking the question about a wildlife group, um, whether anybody will be interested in, in a wildlife themed uh, session next time. Um, yeah, in addition, so, Harvey, we've got so it's Richard Watts, who's also leading for us on transport. We could ask him maybe yeah. see what's uh, happened there with his uh, kind of conversational group around transport within the network. Yeah. So th there's some some ideas. So whether you want put whether you want to put in the chat or say hello or just you know promote your organisation, now's the time to do that. If you've got any events coming up. Again, we can publicise, uh, or we can. The Chris and the team at Edgehill can publicise events that you've got with your um, your groups as well. So there's opportunities to promote that through the network. Yeah, we're also going to post the recording of this on the Langscan website for the event webpage. I think Harvey, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it has been recorded. So um, I mean, most people have got their cameras turned off, but. Um, so yeah, it's over to you all, really. If if anybody wants to say hello, introduce themselves and their organisation, it will be. I'd be. I'm interested to know who's here and what you thought of of the event. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. See Goodman. Hi. Yeah. I'm. Uh, my name's Cheryl Goodman. Um, oh. I'm not quite sure why my camera's not working, but. Anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to say um, I'm just um, interested. We just started um, a four-year project with Burnley Leisure and Culture and Burnley Borough Council uh, through um, the Climate Action Fund, uh, through National Lottery Community Fund as well. Uh, it's a four-year project where we've got a new uh, Green Activities Coordinator in post sitting within the Council's Green Spaces team. Uh, who will be running, um, delivering sort of community sessions, workshops, skilling up sort of residents, encouraging people to sort of come out and look after, you know, the, the local green space in their own area. Um, and we've also got a, a tree planting scheme at the minute in partnership with the charity Trees for Burnley, funding through Trees for Cities. Uh, and that's created 15 new micro woodlands across Burnley, one in each ward. So the new um, Green Activities Coordinator will also be looking after these new uh, spaces as well. So I just wanted to put that out there. Obviously, we're always interested in partnership work. So if there's anybody out there that wants to get in touch with me, I'll also put my details in the chat. Mm. Great. Thanks, Cheryl. That's great. Yeah. Um, and again, if you've got any events coming up that you want uh, or would like promoted, again, if you email through to Chris and the team at Edge Hill, then those 
you know, events and opportunities can be promoted through the uh, network as well. Oh, um, thanks. Great. Yeah, thank you. And thank, thanks for being the first one to uh, to speak up. Does anybody else want to um, introduce themselves? I don't mind speaking up. <laughs> I'm Edison Sathya Nathan. I work for the NHS, the Integrated Care Board in Lancashire and South Cumbria. Um, I'm more than happy to do a presentation here about what we're doing in the NHS. But it's sort of, I was thinking, what do you want? It's, it's quite, you know, I don't want it to be boring to you. So if anybody's got any suggestions, what you'd be interested in hearing about, about hospitals, about GP practices uh, uh, around what people are doing, just put it in the chat, um, you know, because and also how obviously if there's any way that we can work together with you as well. Um, hi, and it's been a, a really good presentation. So thanks ever so much for that, Sam. Great, thanks, Alison. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure a themed um, event on health and and climate and all of those sorts of topics would would be um, would be really useful. I'm sure people would be interested in that. Uh, Rachel, you want to go next? Hi, I just thought I'd introduce myself. Um, I have two jobs. Um, <laughs> so one of my um, roles is community outreach manager for Dance Syndrome, the inclusive dance charity, and um in terms of climate action we are always trying to be sustainable and think of ways to do things more sustainably but more relevant to what this particular session is about um i am working on a new project called local which stands for locally organized communities across lancashire bit of a mouthful sorry and um, that's been delivered over five years we've got five years lottery funding and it's delivered by lancashire association of cvs's um so it's Big project for four of us working part time all across the Lancashire 14 districts um, and we are our work is based on a manifesto that was produced by Voluntary Sector Northwest um, which has nine priorities and one of those is green communities um, so that is one of the things that, that we're looking at um, we're listening to communities um, working with our partners which are the, the CVSs and, and other organisations to try and find um, what the gaps are, you know, within BCFSE organisations and communities, um, give them a voice, evidence their impact. Um, so I love seeing things like um, you're just showing where, you know, you take something like the park um, and, you you know, you, you transform the, the use for the community and it's led by the community. Um, so finding out what's going on in different areas and getting ideas around that and being able to connect people is really useful for us. So I would really like to connect with, you know, the Climate Action Network, um, just so I can signpost people who, who maybe don't know what's, you know, what's going on um, with each other, um, in learning from different areas geographically and things. Yeah, that's great. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Rachel. No, that's great. Yeah, uh, so that you've got your hands full anyway <laughs> with two jobs as well. <laughs> um, anybody else want to, um, yeah, David? Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Dave Savage. I work um, as a community rail officer um, at Community Rail Lancashire. Um, so I think Chris mentioned Richard Watt. He's sent his apologies. He had another meeting to attend to. Um, but just a little bit about the work we do. Uh, we're based in Accrington, which is an eco station. Um, and at, at the station, we have a, a classroom. So one of my jobs as the education officer is I bring um, school groups and community groups using the train um, to Accrington, and then um, I can show them what makes the station eco-friendly. Um, so I do sessions based around rail safety, um, sustainable travel. Um, we've also got a, a, a garden at the station, uh, an eco-garden. So I've been working more and more with um, eco, eco schools, um, help them gain their, uh, gain their award. Um, so yeah, so um, it was nice to sort of hear you know what other people are doing in the in the network, and I'm keen to sort of develop and promote what we do at the, at the station. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Yeah, that's another one for um for a transport session. I think definitely yeah. a bit more detail on that would be great. Um, so anybody else? Uh, one thing I've just uh, remembered uh, there's which will affect I suppose everybody the um the Lancashire local authority devolution deal um there's a consultation at the minute um i'll try and find the link um but there's a 
a website effectively which has got the plan um uh, and, and other information on there and it, it is a consult christy do you know about this do you want to add <clears throat> key thing is the consultation ends at midnight tomorrow <laughs> all right okay um so yeah i think i sent one to you didn't i harvey i sent a link to you i sent it to the likes can leadership team oh yeah yeah um, so yeah just a reminder yeah you oh someone uh, emma's kindly uh put that in yes um yeah thank you harvey just want to mention that yeah great thanks anybody else uh, I don't, i'm not sure i introduced myself properly at the beginning so uh, maybe i'll do that as well well Somebody else is uh, plucking up the courage to speak. But yeah, my name's Harvey. I work for Rubble Rivers Trust, as you can see. Um, so yeah, we're the oh, I'm the the Blue Spaces lead for the um, for the network. Um, obviously, we work across uh, Lancashire and into North Yorkshire, looking after the Ribble River, the Hodder, the Calder, the Darwin, and the Douglas, um, trying to improve uh, the river uh, environment. So that's things like wetland creation, fish pass, uh, weir removals tree planting and then lots of education and engagement work so um that's who we are so if anybody's interested in uh in rivers or wants to see find out a bit more about what we do then please get in touch with us uh, you'll be able to find us online um so does anybody else want to uh say anything debbie's just turned her camera on yeah, I'll introduce myself. Um, where myself and Lee, who's all already on the call, are from Chamber Low Carbon. Um, so we're actually working to obviously help businesses to reduce their carbon footprint. But it's been great to hear and see what you're obviously doing out there. It's uh, it's good to know. Great, thanks, Debbie. Yeah, glad and thanks for for joining us. <laughs> um, so we've got Robin who's turned his camera on. Jenny, I don't know, Robin, do you want to say hi? Yeah, hi, uh, Robin Jones. So I've I actually wear a few different hats. Um, so I I sit with Lancashire County Council and the Northwest Net Zero Hub in my day job. So uh, the Net Northwest Net Zero Hub is essentially kind of local um, version of Department of Energy Security and Net Zero. So we, we run a few different projects. So I, I act there as a Lancashire area lead. But in my uh, in my spare time, uh, what very little of it I have, I'm also a director of Community Energy Preston. So we are we we just formed in November, but we're aiming to get a a megawatt of of solar panels on buildings it, by 2025, um, and we're we're keen to to work with whoever we can um, to to essentially reduce as much carbon as we can while still building that that kind of um, community benefit and and then being able to feed that back into sort of re reducing carbon and, and bottling fuel poverty so uh that's that's where we are we're, we're taking a very technological approach with it, to it um so there's not too much environmental in there but it's very much energy based but um we're more than happy to uh if you know anybody with a big roof and uh and a big um energy demand we're more than happy to to speak to them so i'll put some details for for them in the chat as well no, brilliant. No, obviously, clean green energy is uh, key for helping reduce um, climate change. So, yeah, green energy. Again, death, probably energy is probably another topic, again, that could be covered through one of these as well. So, so Je Jenny, do you want to say hi? Cool. I, can't, I can't hear you at the moment, Jenny. yeah i don't know whether it must be a set microphone no. setting maybe is it your volume jenny is it up or not oh there we go i think we might be am i back yes that's sorry. it yeah there we go sorry my computer is having one of those days today um yeah i just wanted to quickly introduce myself my name is jenny i work as a community engagement officer for uh, lancashire county council um we are the treescapes team uh what's really nice is that i recognize some of the faces here so that's really lovely to see um but our job we work with the ribble rivers trust and groundwork and lots of other partners 
to accelerate tree planting. So our job is to find funding for groups, communities, private landowners, anyone basically to plant trees. Um, so if that is a roadblock for you and your communities, then yeah, by all means get get in contact because there's probably something we can do. Um, and depending on the land and depending on what happens, uh, you will either work with us or you will work with the Ribble River Rivers Trust or Groundwork, depending on who is the most appropriate for your site. So yeah, I just wanted to say hello and, and that's what our team is for. We can do everything from site plans up until sort of spades in the ground, helping you dig a hole on the day kind of thing. So just, uh, yeah, just let us know if we can help. Great, thanks, Jenny. Emma, you with? Hi, everybody. <clears throat> As other people have been brave, I'll say hello. Um, I'm uh, Emma McKenzie. I uh, started working for Lancashire County Council in December. I'm the new like local nature recovery officer um, uh, for for the council, and I've been working with um ollie for those of you that know ollie on the local nature recovery strategy as part of my role and i'm um, helping to put together the sort of comms and engagement element of of that and part of that will be reaching out to why uh groups like yourselves um and uh, that will be potentially uh mainly through a, a people in nature group um, as part of the um, LNRS governance structure. And um, yeah, just wanted to say hello and let people know um, that we're, yeah, we'll be reaching out. And um, I know Ollie's done a communication with lots of people already, but um, I'll be at a road show at South Ribble uh, Borough Council um, on Monday, um, which is a, um, very much a communities network group and I think Chris is potentially at that um so yeah as I as I um get into my role more I'm sure I will um meet more of you along the way thanks Emma Chris do you want to come in yeah just very quickly yes I will see you there Emma <laughs> um at the event on Monday morning uh, also just to let you know that Kate Horsley is one in the leadership team of Langscan uh, who works with you at Lancashire County Council. And um, we're in regular contact with people like Jane Har Hardy Jones as well. We're, we're updating the Lancashire Climate Officers Group on Monday, the 5th of fe February with recent uh, Lancashire County activities and plans in the making. Uh, so just to tie those kind of like those links up, Emma, nice to meet you. Hope you, you too. as well. Thank you. See you on Monday. <laughs> yeah, see you Monday. Yeah. yeah, and if people aren't sure what the um, local nature recovery strategy is, then um, I'm sure Emma will be happy to give some more information. We can perhaps share some links to, to information on that. Um, I think if you can um, get involved in the consultation or input into that, I would you know yeah. really encourage everyone to do that because the the nat nature recovery strategy will be an important sort of document, important strategy for the whole of Lancashire um, going forward in terms of fund where you know being able to get funding and where funding's channeled and all of those sorts of things so um if you can get involved in it then please do there'll be a um there will be a wider um public um questionnaire engagement survey going out and um, we're hoping that will be um fairly soon into february once the devolution one's finished um, which will be on the local nature recovery strategy and um like i said i need to obviously um touch base with ollie but um the this might be a, a an opportunity session where um we could do a little presentation on lnrs um if that would be useful and there is an lnrs inbox which i think is just let me double check and i will i can type it into the chat um, but there is a, a general email inbox um, that's monitored on, for the LNRS, which is just lnrs at lancashire.gov.uk. Um, so I'll quickly copy and paste that into the into the chat as well. Great. Thanks, Emma. Uh, Emma from Action for Conservation, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I thought I'd follow up as another Emma. <laughs> um, nice to meet everyone. Um, yeah, I work for Action for Conservation. We... We work across the UK, but I'm the Northwest Programme Manager, um, so covering 
big area of the northwest um working predominantly with 12 to 16 year olds so we run um we run workshops in secondary schools we have an ambassador program where we work with various partners like we work with groundwork for example in the past to run um hands-on actions with our young people um and we run camps so that's sort of something that's coming up quite soon so if anyone does work with people in that age bracket be amazing to share that it's a free camp opportunity that we run in the peak district every year um yeah just thought i'd say hi thanks for thanks for having me in the group <laughs> thanks emma that's great so um are you, are you looking for conservation projects for your groups to get involved with or do you tend to have them already um yeah it's a mix or our, our ambassador program we tend to find different projects for them to get involved with depending on what they're interested in so we work with them to learn you know are you interested in um, do you want to do tree planting or do you want to do like um, a reuse repair workshop um so it's very broad we don't have one specific area i guess our specific area is young people <laughs> and yeah. then everything else feeds into that um and empowering them to, to take action and have their voices um heard um and sort of involved in important decision making so it's very broad yeah. um <laughs> yeah so i mean i was thinking if if people have got projects that they're trying to do and they need a, some extra pairs of hands potentially if you know the a group you might be able to bring a group along to help out yeah yeah okay great so people can have bear that in mind when they're um when they're developing pro new projects but, yeah. yeah thanks for um thanks for contributing uh jennifer Hi everyone, I'm, I'm really sorry I can't get my camera to work, um, but I'm Jenny, I am from Rosendale Valley Energy, a fairly new organisation, and I work on our local energy advice demonstrator project, which is about delivering energy advice to the people of Rosendale, uh, looking at ways that they can save energy, reduce the bills, put measures in place to make the homes hopefully hope healthier, warmer, and thereby reducing their energy bills and their carbon footprint. I'll um I'll put my email address in the chat in case anybody would like to contact me to find out a bit more about what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. meet everyone. Thanks, Jenny. Great. So we've got, I mean, it, we've scheduled an hour, I think, so there's a few more minutes left if anybody else wants to say hello or have got anything coming up that they want to share. Let the silence hang, just in case. <laughs> um, I can just add, okay. Harvey, that anyone who has any event coming up can uh, let me know and we'll advertise it on the likes can uh, web page events web page yeah happy to promote your events whatever they are brilliant right well we've um yeah i think if nobody else has got anything else to uh to add then we'll we'll leave it there so you get an extra uh five minutes to go make another cup of tea or something before you on to your next uh job for the day so yeah thank you all very much for uh joining us today i hope you've enjoyed it um we'll be running the plan is to run probably six of these per year. So the next one is perhaps going to be March um, and that's going to be hosted probably by Sam, hopefully. Uh, um, and we'll we'll let you know, but it's probably going to be themed, um, you know, some of the things we've talked about today, uh, but we'll let everybody know in plenty of time. We'll, we'll organise it. And um, and again, if you there's a few people who've said they're happy to talk at future ones as well. So we'll, we'll try and get the programme planned out and then you you know what's coming up. Um, but again, make the most of the network. Um, you know, hopefully even people have made some contacts today that they're going to follow up and uh, it'll be useful for, for everyone going forward. Um, yeah, so that's that's it for today then. Thank you very much for coming. And um, great, great start. Thank you, you very much, time. Harvey and Sam. Thanks, guys. Great effort. Really Thanks. good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.